وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم الهمنا مراشد امورنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا what i will explain at the moment for this brief about half an hour to 40 minutes is that while you in campus and in the world around you you will meet many people who will be very intrigued by your faith of islam but they will never understand what makes you so unique many a person thinks that islam is like christianity like judaism it is one faith whereas islam was like the perfection of all from the time of nabi adam alayhi salatu wasalam this was like that final rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that with his coming now the building was made now there was that last block to be put in and as that block was being put in all the anbiya alayhi salam's effort so what they will call jesus nabi isa alayhi salam's effort was also in this islam nabi musa alayhi salam's effort was also in this islam ibrahim alayhi salam's dua was in this islam every nabi that came their focus was this So it was not one religion it was a completion of submission to almighty allah it had to happen at the end of the world at the end of times the last because the final match is when every decision is made our islam is the final match and it was going to reach to that level of unique perfection before islam there was never something called a final book so the christians also never claimed we have the final book the jews would never claim it there was never something called the final religion the final code of life only us but when we explain it to people around us what is so unique about this final so allah tbarak taala made islam like a tent and you can enter this tent from four sides each side will be a door and at that door will be a proof of the wonder of this tent that why is it so unique this tent compared to every other tent the three four tents the four doors i will mention try and remember it as far as you can so whenever you meet someone you can take them into your tent of islam through that door when they will ask you what is so unique about this faith door number 1 which is easy for me to understand you to understand is called the door of quran we are the only faith in the world that can lay claim to and they also have accepted it is not something that muslims have to prove even non muslims will say that this is the only book in the world that 1300 400 years have passed but they cannot pick up any change taking place with the passing of times there is no old and new there is no re invented there is no new translation there is something that has been moving with the era at every era it made people learn its language but it would not change its language even if the man could not know the arabic language it would not give in you will read me in a language you don't understand but i will never come onto your language onto your tongue even a translation of quran will not be called quran quran was quran it was that one unique scripture that allah tbarak taala at the beginning of time said la tuharrik bihi lisanaka the nabi of allah when it was coming and it was known it's not going to be one or two verses and it was known that if you attribute even one sentence to almighty allah which allah tbarak taala did not reveal walaw taqawwala alayna ba'd al-aqawil la akhadna minhu bil yamin that even if the messenger of allah has to say one sentence which we had not said and he attributes it to us then he would be grabbed by the hand what we call by the jugular vein meaning death would immediately fall upon him so much of fear that even mistakenly one word must not come out even mistakenly one word la tuharrik bihi lisanak the verse of quran came that do not worry of moving your tongue that you remember every word la tuharrik bihi lisanak li ta'jala bi inna alayna jam'a allah tbarak taala at that time announced our job is the preservation of this we will preserve it in your heart how it became preserved in the heart of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that itself is a door for the unique tent of islam 
There was no Jibrail alayhi salam coming down and saying, write it immediately. The writing was taking place after. After Jibrail alayhi salam was gone, if the surah had to be one, 30 pages is one juz. 30 pages is one juz. A boy who's giving his time day in and day out in front of the ustad to learn one juz, even if he got a mastermind, it takes him about one week. In that one week, again and again, he makes door. He makes mistake after mistake, mistake after mistake. For Rasulullah sallallahu there was no time for door. There was no time to make repetition. There was no time, let me write it on some paper, I can look at it. It was a meeting with Jibrail alayhi salam, which sometimes only took a few seconds. In that few seconds, it was a collection from Jibrail alayhi salam into the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How it happened, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said it would be like a buzz of a bee. Very far for the people of the past to understand. Today, at least in technology, we saw examples. That you take that USB, you put it in that computer, how many files are in that? And then you just said copy. And as the thing copies, you just hear buzz. In that one buzz, as is, word by word, when Jibrail alayhi salam came, he came with the wording. He came with how it will be written. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi did not know writing. But how it would be written would be preserved in his mind that the Sahabi would write it exactly like that in front of him. They could not write it in any other style. The writing, the fatha, dhamma, kasra, how it will be read. The different dialects that permission were being given to. A man from that village came, he was allowed to read it with a slight changing in wording. Everything came in that one buzz. And the explanation of that and the recording of that that after three years, four years, five years, you come and say, did you read this? As it was read that time, it will be repeated without one change. No deletion, no virus, no file missing. That one buzz was a miracle of Islam, which no other book in the world has ever had. Inna alayna jam'a. It is our job, we will gather it and preserve it. Thumma inna alayna bayana. And it is our job, we will explain it to the world. It is Quran that is unique, door number one. Take any Muslim, non-Muslim friend through the tent of Islam and tell him, my friend, the first proof of my religion is this book. I want you to look at it. Look at it at a time where man never knew what's happening in the womb, but it explained what's happening. At a time where man had never known the submarine, but it explained what's happening under the earth. At a time, time man never knew how to jump higher than where he can jump. There was no moving into the air. But Quran would explain as you move up the air, you will find that the pressure is different. It would explain the sun, it would explain the moon. It would explain things that man today only is touching the brink of it. Say to the person, this is the first door of my tent. It is called Al-Quran. It is a miracle and it is the proof of this miracle. Anyway, person goes to the next door. He will find at the next door, is the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was different from any king, any ruler. In this aspect that any person who comes, whether it's the South African president, whether it's the American president, no matter how many promises they give before election, their only and sole purpose is their pocket. Their pocket and the pocket of their friends and families. Whoever becomes a leader, his first worry is when I die, or forget dying when I retire. There must be so much in my account that I can retire happily. There must be so much in my wife's account. My family must get the first contracts. Family means everything. It is Islam that is unique until today. The books of history can show it. Life around us can show it. When Rasulullah wasallam came with his dawah, he made it clear to the world, I am not a politician. And how he did that, he brought his family onto difficulty. Where others would have ease, it was his family that had to suffer. When the command was made, zakat, you must give money. Immediately it was said, but the money cannot go to my family. Banu Hashim were not allowed to take one cent of zakat. You will go some places in the world today where you meet these people called Sayyid. Sayyid means a man from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The most money in the Muslim world is zakat. Lillah hardly people give. But the family of Rasulullah cannot take zakat. 
So sometimes you will go visit them, you will find a very old man. You will find a lot of children in his flat. And they are living in very, very hard times. They got no crime that they had done. But it is because my master, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, my family must not benefit from the money that comes into Islam. Until today you will see they living lives of poverty. Zakat can make their lives very well, but they can't take zakat. And lilla, hardly anyone gives lilla. But they are living like that. It's an open proof. In the books of history you will find examples where Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha hears that slaves have come. Ali radiallahu anha says to her, go and ask for a slave. She comes, she feels too shy, she comes back home. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa will meet her afterwards. What many a time you read or you hear after Fajr Salah, after Asr, read Tasbih Fatimi. The Tasbih that was taught to Fatima radiallahu anha, it was taught on this. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa comes at late at night. He says, oh my daughter, you came to see me. On what reason you came? She is shy. Ali radiallahu anha says, oh Allah's Nabi, times are difficult. The work in the house is not easy. Her back is bending. Her fingers are peeling. I only send her to ask you for one slave. Their house was not like our houses. Our wives can't do without even three. They got three, four maids. Even then they say, hey, life is very tight. Hers wasn't the housework. In their life, it was you need water, you go and fetch the water from the well. That well could be sometimes two to three miles away. After you gather the water, you must bring it back. You must put some food for the animals. You must grind your wheat. You can't go to pick and pay and just buy everything. You have to make everything. Making after making after making, a time comes where your body starts giving in. He said, we need a helper in the house. On that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I will give you something better than that. Before you sleep, read subhanallah 33 times. Alhamdulillah 33. Allahu Akbar 34. In today's time, your wife asks you for an increase. And you tell her, I'll give you something better than that. She'll walk out of the house. She don't want to hear about any tasbih. But how they accept it? They just kept quiet. And then what a sentence he said. He said, by the qasam of Allah, as long as the people of Sufa do not have food, I cannot give you. I am going to sell these slaves just so that I can get money to look after them. And in that he would walk out. But for Hazrat Fatima radiallahu it wouldn't be depression. It would be an honor. It would become known in the world that tasbih of Fatima radiallahu anha. But he made that door of his tent that this is not a king, this is a nabi. He has not come to establish an empire for his family. He has come to give a religion. Those that suffered the most for this religion were his own family. Interest had to be made haram, mamnu, not allowed. A lot of people were owing Abbas radiallahu anha a lot of interest. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stands up and he says, no longer is interest allowed. And he said, the first, whoever is owing my uncle Abbas, it is all wiped out. We may not be talking of 100, 200, 300, you understand when interest gathers over the years. This could be going into huge amounts of money in one sentence because he's my uncle, wiped out. This is a unique door and invite people to explore this door. That it is Islam where the Nabi of Allah never bring wealth to his family. He never bring prestige to his family. They suffered, they sacrificed, they cried. There was a time when he saw his grandson taking a date. There was no food in the house. He found a date on the ground. A small child when he's starving puts the date in. Nabi Islam says, Oh! The wording comes in the narration. He puts his finger in his mouth. He pulls it out. That young Hassan radiallahu will be looking like, what did I do? And then he would say, oh my grandson, don't you know that zakat is not allowed for us? It was not only that he suffered his family, he saw them. There is no door of any politician, king in the world. That you can visit his house and you will find his family as beggars. Up till today, take the people to see the door of Islam, which is called the door of the Sayyid. This is the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but you'll see that man is poor. That man is suffering. Zakat could have taken him out of all his problems. But you will say the Nabi of Allah said, Zakat is not for the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It's a miracle door. Door number three is the door where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left people in charge. They are called the ulama after. 
Those ulama, as they are sitting there, then many people in the world over 1,400 years have come to the ulama. They came with bribes, they came with gifts, they came with women. Everyone came with one thing, can you change one law? That's all. And in every era, some law wanted to be changed. Every other faith in the world, that man sitting there in behalf of Jesus, he was also told when someone will come to you, forgive him, overlook him, write him off, do what you want with him. That man sitting there when someone came and said, you know what, Pope, boss, Life is very hard. In the past I used to like Aisha and Fatima. Now I like Zaid and Muhammad. So can you find something in your scripture that allows boy to marry boy, girl to marry girl? So the Pope will look little bit, little bit. After a while he'll say, you know what? Life is difficult, never mind, allowed. We just retranslate this one line. It has happened. But in Islam that scholar will be there. Forget someone coming with a gift to him, a present, a prize, a pretty woman. Even if the king of the time comes with a sword or a gun. And the wars that we see on Islam today is because of that same gun. That scholar is sitting at the door and he's told, change it, that's all. Make a religion of Islam which is like all the other faiths. That come to the masjid, come to the musalla, read your salah, go out, but be normal outside. Outside be cool, mix around, go to parties, go to clubs. See who you want, sleep with who you want, do what you want, and then come here and lift up your hands. It's Eid day. And after Eid, say, how was Eid? Eid was good. Have a Christmas. That scholar will also say, we don't want war. We don't want death. We can also change. Who doesn't want an easy life? Who doesn't want girls all around? Who doesn't want to talk to whoever he wants to talk? But that scholar then looks down and he says that I have been put by the Rasul of Allah only to say what the Rasul of Allah said. I can't make the change. First the girl is put in front. He looks how beautiful the girl is. He says, I'm sorry, I can't. And then when the gun comes out, that scholar, he said, if you want to shoot, you can shoot. But I'd rather die and suffer here in front of Allah. I can't suffer. The history of Islam has showed the blood of scholars. There were those countries which saw thousands and thousands of scholars martyred in a few days. Some of them just said, we will never allow interest. And they were wiped out. Tanks were brought. Holes were dug. They were put in. At the time when the British came to India, ulama were sent alive to carry bags. With that heavy bag, they were put, thrown into the river so that you don't die, you drown. As that man is going up and down in the waters, now bullets are flying. In. The only reason was that so that the remaining scholars who are there can immediately say, okay, we give up. We will tell our people what you want to tell. There and there the ulama looked. Tears came down their eyes. And when they asked you ready to give up. Then they would say that man which Quran mentions. فَمِنُهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَ وَمِنُهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرْ There are many who have made a promise with Allah. He said they have already fulfilled their promise. He said I'm waiting. They were then sent into fire. Oil was put around their body. So that the fire burns bigger. It is this unique tent which is a proof of what a tent Islam is. That it could be me, it could be any other scholar. When the time comes that say, make one change in your religion, then the man says, I am only sitting here saying what the Rasul of Allah said, I must say. I can't change. Unique Islam is. Quran was that one door. The family of Rasulullah is the other door. They in their poverty are saying to the world, If he came for his family, we would be the richest in the world. He never allowed us to take zakat. We can't come out of our difficulty. The third though is the scholar. Perhaps he hasn't got the biggest mansion. He hasn't got the biggest palace. Perhaps he had to see himself or his family being killed. Just because he was not ready to say one sentence. Which the enemy wanted him to say. But he said, I can't say it. Those are three unique doors. As for the fourth door, this is what these five pages are supposed to be. But very fast I will take you through the fourth door. The fourth door is called the miracle of revolution in the people around an individual. There is a word in the Arabic language which calls Rijal Hawlar Rasul. The people around the messenger of Allah. To understand what revolution was made when Nabi Wasallam came, you put yourself in that era. It was an era which was different to all other eras. 
It is like sometimes we take you. We also have experience. Sometimes they send us to a certain country. They say the people of this country, they know nothing about character. So they say to the teacher, it's your job, you must teach them. Some of my friends, they went to the Arab lands to become teachers in English. So I asked them, how is it to teach the Arab boys? They say the Arab boys, just because you are South African, they look at you like dirt. You can't teach them character. You can't teach them to be obedient. You can't teach them anything. You must only teach them English. What they do with their lives is theirs. You can't change. Someone who is hard at the beginning, you can't change. Many people nowadays get married. The man says, I'll change my wife. He's never changed her. Big talks to change one woman in your house. Your own woman. She's under you. She's locked up in your house. You giving her the money, you giving her the clothing, you giving her everything. After a few years, the man says, I thought I was the lion in the house. She's the trainer of the lion. <laughs> One woman you can't change. You can't change people. Rasulullah sallallahu came to a nation that forget needing change. It was such that you needed to sort out the problem. You say, burn the whole farm. It's only weeds. There is only weeds. They were the nation that saw happiness in bearing their daughters alive. Which Allah Tabarakullah says when someone would say to them, you got a daughter. Instead of getting happy that the delivery was okay, the daughter survived. Allah Tabarakullah says, وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ When the news comes to them, it's good news that you got a daughter. He says, you see their face becoming black. He becomes angry. He's looking at his friends, يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ He's angry. He starts hiding away. He says, what a disgrace. What am I going to do with a girl in the house? Put yourself in that environment. When Allah Tabarakullah says, Ala sa'a ma yahkumun. Terrible was their decisions. For them, the death of their own daughter was for them happiness. He goes back home. He says to his wife, I sorted her out. No one in the world would have seen. For them at that time to eat insects was nothing. To be wild was nothing. To be angry was nothing. To see murder was nothing. And the best was they were not people who you could educate because they were ummi. They could not read. The miracle of Rijal Hawla Rasul, Allah Tabarakullah says, Huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyin. In a nation who knew nothing about education, in that nation Allah sends a Nabi. Forget teaching them Alif Bata, Yatlu Alehim Ayat. He has to read to them the whole Quran. He has to explain to them a knowledge which will last till the day of Qiyamah. Yatlu Alehim Ayatik. Wa yuallimuhumu al kitaba wal hikmah. Not only make them read like you got the child in Madrasa at a young age, Alif Ba, A, 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 Ba, Ba. He had to teach them the meaning. He had to teach them the deeper meanings. He had to teach them that in zakat you will pay the zakat on camels. What's the zakat on camels? They never even know how to write one, two, three. Suddenly they have to work out when you got so much you will be paying so much. When you got so much you have to take out so much. They had to learn the laws of jihad. How much each soldier will get when he goes out in the path of Allah. How you will divide it. They had to learn the laws of inheritance. A nation who never knew maths had to be taught everything. Science they had to be taught. Geography they had to be taught. Counting they had to be taught. They had to be taught Sharia, the laws of wuzu, the laws of ghusl. Me and you know what we learned in madrasa when we were small, we forgot three quarter of it. Today someone asks you, you're making a ghusl, you remember what's first in ghusl? That boy say, I don't know, I just walk in the shower, put it on, I come out, work is done. Where am I going to remember what is first, what is sunnah? Small things like that they remembered and they sent it to the world. Small, small points. But a nation who never knew how to write. A miracle transformation. بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ Something to look at that door when you see that group of sahaba standing there. The first thing they will say to you is, you might be looking at me today as I was the most unique that the world ever seen. You know me when I was young, my father also said to me that you cannot even look after sheep and goats. Umar radiallahu said this when he became the great khalif of Islam. He says, Khattab, my father, if he could see what's happening today, he said, I remember the time when he gave me one shot because I had not done something on the farm properly. He said, you can't even look after the goat. He said, if today he could see I'm looking after the whole world. 
That man never have an upbringing. He never go to the school for politicians. He was not of the royal family of England. Put him in this university. From grade one, he will learn how to put on his trouser. You put it on like a king, you'll do it less. He never learned that. Miracle transformation. There was no mass media. There was no WhatsApp he could send to them. There was no schools that he could bring them in. It was the company of Rasulullah sallallahu But in where? In an environment that was so hostile. That for 13 years in Makkah, Mukarramah, when they gathered also, they were scared. The enemy mustn't know we are. He never had a computer to put it on and show them this is our religion. Hiding, hiding, they would come for 13 years. But in that 13 years, a revolution was made. What was the revolution going to give? Allah Taala would speak of this revolution. And it is a door you must invite people. Many of us are Hafiz of Quran. Those that are not, we know this verse. It is one of the few places where the word Muhammad is mentioned in Quran. But Allah Taala in this verse was going to explain what was so unique about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was the proof that this is the man of Allah? It says Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammad is without doubt the messenger of Allah. And one of the biggest proofs of it is وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ That if you want to see a father, look at his son. In Arabic they say الْوَلَدُ سِرٌ لِأَبِي A child is the secret of his father. A child is the secret of a father. Many a mother you will see her in full niqab because her husband is a alim of the town. But she doesn't want to be in niqab. And sometimes the alim himself doesn't want his wife to be in niqab. But he knows if she takes out a parda, he'll get fired from the job. So he tells her, you just cover. But his daughters and sons, they're not covered. They're walking around nice and open. Al-waladu, a child is the secret of his father. You want to see a teacher, look at his students. According to the caliber of the students, you can say the students are good, give him a better job. This is a top teacher. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's proof of his being the master messenger of Allah was the men around him. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ Allah Tawarqa says those around him stood out in the world with three qualities. This is the miracle of the men around him which you will not find in history. Number one, أَشِدَّا عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ رُحَمَا أُبَيْنَهُمْ That to be able to have love for each other on the basis of Islam. I want you to think about this. Normally we give many bayans before nikah. But at the time of nikah, our biggest dua is, I say, forget the bayan, make dua. Because today two families are meeting. Before the meeting of the families, a lot of kunshas, presents were brought. This one brought whole house, that one brought whole house. But the day they get married, they start fighting like cats and dogs. The girl doesn't want to see her mother-in-law. The boy doesn't want to see his father-in-law. As soon as you enter one house, war breaks out. We know in the past, our fathers, when they never have so much, one eat, the whole family would get together. But when the house starts getting bigger, everyone starts getting pushed out. Now it's jealousy, now it's hatred. Now if the one auntie cooks a chicken better than the other auntie, it's a war. What she did, she stole my recipe. They can't even unite on a chicken in that era. Something to think about, this word of Quran, Ruhama ubainahum. That as this religion got bigger, 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 the normal demand, tribalism amongst the Arabs were on its height. Our tribalism, I don't know if you people have heard, in our families there's something called surti. That which gam you come from, which village in India. We never came from the village, we were born in South Africa. But they still tell us you from that village. So that boy comes home and he says, Mommy, I want to marry one girl I saw in university. But she's from a different village in India, she's also born here. But someone in India is on a village. Sometimes that village could be opposite the bridge also. Just opposite the bridge. Suddenly your mother, your granny, they go in a fit. They don't know why to tell you no. They'll say she doesn't make roti like how we make roti. They don't know why this is called a tribalism. Their village, never. Amongst the Arabs it was so severe tribalism. That when the man Musaylama Kadhab, he stood up and he made a claim, I am the Rasul of Allah. And Abu Bakr radiallahu's army had to go and fight him. Someone met someone who was following Musaylama and said, Do you really believe that he can be a Nabi? He's filthy, he's dirty, he's a liar. 
so faulty this Muslima character was that another woman came to his tent. So she said, you want to be the Nabi of Allah. I also want to be a Nabi. So if you can be a Nabi, I can also. So he said, yeah, there's a lot placed there in the treasures. You can also become a Nabi. So then he said, let me marry you. So at least there could be a marriage between two Nabis. So she said, no problem. She was thrilled to marry Musaylama. Now she goes back. She also had a tribe. She said, you know what? That Nabi married me. So they were so happy. They asked, what's the meher? But she said, I forgot to ask for meher. So how can you forget? Go back. This is a Nabi meeting another Nabi. When she comes to Musaylama, she says, my people are very upset. There's no meher. He's so stingy also. He could have taken out some gold and given her. So stingy. He said, okay, your meher will be that there are five times salah in the day. I think it's the Fajr and the Isha is the hard ones. I make it ma'af for you and your family. <laughs> that was a top meher for them. So much lies. So then they came and asked him, what Quran you got? You say you are a Rasul of Allah. He had a jinn. So they said, your jinn is bringing some words to you. What is that words? So he never know what to say. And you can't imitate Quran no matter how much you try. But he hit a chance. So where Quran example had a surah Al-Qari'ah. Mal qari'a wa ma adraka mal qari'a. Do you know what qiyama is? So he thought that I can just put something on that scale. So he read al fil the elephant. Do you know the elephant? What must I tell you about the elephant? So al fil mal fil wa ma adraka mal fil. Now he has to carry on. He doesn't know how to carry on. So he said he got a long nose and he got a short tail. His own people started laughing. This, you don't call this even red riding hood story. At that time, someone said, do you really believe him to be a Nabi? He said, we also know he's a liar. He said, but the problem is he's from our family. He's from our clan. Because he's from our clan, this was the tribalism in that era. In such people, Rasulullah Wasallam had to create love. In such people who for hundred years plus were having war, some of those people had killed the other man's father and brothers. He now reaches into them and he says, forget your war. You think it's so easy to say. We tried it in families where husband and wife is fighting. In families where mother-in-law and daughter-in-law is fighting. You can bring a taweez, you can bring ayat, you can bring money, you can do what you want. Finally you tell the husband, take your wife and build for another kitchen. She must stay out, your mother must stay out. Every day they meet this war. When Rasulullah Wasallam had to come, he had to join tribes. Allah Taala says, وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ Miracle of Islam is Allah united their hearts. Look at this verse. لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا Had you spent whatever the world could give, you would not have managed to unite these hearts. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ It was Allah who made like glue. They became so strong in love for each other. So strong in love. That if a battle had to be taking place and the man saw his son who's a disbeliever and he saw a Muslim who's from another tribe, he would run towards his son to kill him before that man could be killed. On the basis of Islam, they forgot everything. Everything they forgot. This is that miracle which Quran said, Ruhama ubainahum. When you will come to that fourth door of the tent of Islam, you will see a group of Sahaba whose hearts are so, so clean that the books of history had to write here miracle. Ruhama ubainahum. Tarahum rukka'an sujjaday yabtahoon fadlam min Allahi wa ridwana. Seemahum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood. Miracle number two of this revolution. It is very easy for me to become a leader of campus, leader of the country. During the day when the cameras are on me, then I'm giving a top lecture, then I go out to give welfare work, as I'm giving some present to the boy, then everyone is taking pictures. And you say, look in the picture, smile, say, come stand here. Now I go back after 6 o'clock, I said, I did work for the day. But after 6 o'clock comes, every leader in the world goes home. Then he closes his doors. Now he sits back by the TV, he calls his wife or his secretary, or secretaries or you know who he calls in that house. And now as he starts looking at the newspaper, now he's waiting for sleep. Before sleep comes, now there'll be one, two drinks of liquor. The privacy of the night is not under the camera. 
Because if the country can see what filth is doing at night, they also will take back their vote. Don't look at his private life. It's the public life that matters. He's your president. The revolution of Islam was that when the world would go to sleep, the men around Rasulullah Wasallam would wake up in the hours of the night. They could be the leaders of humanity, but they would be on the musalla. Allah Tawarukullah says, Rukkaan sujjadan. You would see them in ruku, you would see them in sajda. You would see them crying. A leader doesn't cry. A leader makes other people cry. A leader says, you know who I am. I'll wipe you out. You would see them crying. That, oh Allah, do not wipe me out. This revolution is a revolution of truth. This is a proof of a Nabi. Allah Tawarukullah said, you would see it amongst the Sahaba. Ali radiallahu an, his wording was famous. He said, Verily I had seen a nation, I cannot find anyone like them today. I had seen a nation, I cannot find anyone like that today. And then he said, Kanu yusbihun shu'than ghubaran. He said they would wake up in the early part of the morning. Their houses had no carpet, they would be making sajda in dust. Yellowness would come on their faces because there was no food in their stomachs. He said then, Yatara wahoon. While other people take rest on their beds, sometimes we're sleeping this way, then my back starts paining, then we sleep that way. He says, they would take rest between their legs and their heads. When their legs could not manage the qiyam any longer, they would go in sajda. The sajda would just be to take out the swell from the leg. He said, they would take rest between the heads and the legs. And they would carry on till the thought when dawn now had reached its end, dawn had started. He said, at that time they would start thinking of Allah. They wouldn't stand up and he would say to their wife, You saw how much salah I read? Aso and dua. At that time, as they would move, he says, You would see tears coming down their eyes. That, oh Allah, if you punish me, then it's all finished. That revolution Quran was going to mention, that we had mentioned it in the previous scriptures. Allah Tabarukullah says, Zalika mataluhum fi Torah. When Musa a.s. got his book, he was told, A nation is coming that these will be the men around the Rasul of Allah. That revolution invite people towards it. When they will enter the tent of what is called the men around the Rasul of Allah, they will find a nation that was like animal. And in the company of one messenger of Allah, they became like angels. During the day they were just, during the night they were crying. I will give you a few examples of this and then we will bring an end. I want you to understand this door properly. Door number one was Quran, invite your friends to come and see it. An unaltered word in a nation which knew nothing about reading and writing. Had it been in university, they sent it, everyone would have taken a snap with their phones. Everyone would have written it down. Then also so many mistakes would have come. In a nation which never knew anything about paper. Those that knew how to write, they had to go look for bark. They had to look for leaves. They had to gather that. A nation who knew nothing about knowledge were going to become the stalwarts of knowledge for the world. Quran, door number one. The family of Rasulullah sallam in poverty, door number two. The third is the ulama of Islam with guns at their heads, with swords at their throats. Make one change to this religion, we can't. You can kill me, you can kill my whole family, this religion will never change. Door number three. Door number four was the men around the Rasul of Allah. Who started off without any education. Who started off looking after sheep and goats. And our example in South Africa is the best. We saw when the reins were taken from people who knew how to run one plant. And were given to people who knew how to run nothing. You have to expect there has to be a total collapse. And we see it in the country and you don't blame them. Because that man who never saw money. When they start seeing money, what do you think will happen? Nowadays when we walk in the country, I see some people. You'll see on their hand there is more gold than there is in the banks also. Just because they had no gold once upon a time. South Africa is not a country to show your gold to the world because the next day you'll be robbed. But because our families never had gold, so they'll have rings on every finger. Let's see, I got money. People who never saw, don't know how to use it. Because the men around the Rasul of Allah... Who at one time they never even counted to 1,000. One Sahabi radiallahu anhu had to sell a slave. 
That slave, I think, was the daughter of the king of that era, of one of the lands that they took. So someone came to him and said, please ransom her, we'll buy her back. So he gave a figure. And the person said, yeah, I paid. And he took the girl back to the king. Later on, they asked him, how much you sold it for? So he gave one figure, very low figure. They said, a princess, you sold her so low. He said, I don't know what's the number after that number. That was the highest number I knew. That nation, I will take you through what they became. This is that last door. When you enter it, may you see it, can you invite other people through this door? As you enter this door, you will find lil fuqara il muhajirin. Allah Tabarukullah said, at this door first you will find those fuqara, those people who became poor for Islam. They were not poor before. Abu Bakr radiallahu was very wealthy. Islam came, all his wealth was spent. Khadija radiallahu anha, all her wealth was spent. Now came the law, leave Makkah, Mukarramah, go. Suddenly when they went, the only thing they had left was their houses. As they were leaving, they knew this house we will never see again. This is the meaning of Lil Fuqara, Al Muhajirin, Al Ladina Ukhriju Min Diyarihim. Those poor people who had to make hijrat to another land, who were pulled out of their houses, as they were going, not one of them said that when Muhammad came to us with this religion, he destroyed our entire life. As they made that hijrat to Medina Munawara, to a land where they knew there's no one for us there. There is no house for us there. There is no money for us there. As they went there, Allah Tawarukullah said, يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا As they went, everyone was smiling. That, oh Allah, in your love I am making this journey. It was a miracle of that man. You will see that group standing. Then you will see that group, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّ أُدَّارَ وَالْإِمَانَ They were called the Ansar. No one wants somebody else to come into his house. You say, I put up this here. You coming from where? When the Ansar saw the Muhajirin, they understood these people are coming to eat from our land. They're coming to live on our land. They're coming with no money we have to give them. Normally as soon as you see someone coming, is a threat. Immediately the Ansar went and said that you have left your wives also behind. I got two women. Both are my wives. I'm ready to divorce one also. Normally me and you will also say I'm ready to divorce my wife. The one you don't like. I loved her enough. He said you choose the one you like. I will divorce that one. They went to that limit. Where a sahabi of the Ansar knew that the muhajir doesn't like to take from him. So when the harvest was cut, now the sahabi, the Ansari says to the muhajir that we are business partners. But the muhajir says we are business partners, but I can't do farming. And it is your farm. So it's not right for me to take. So the Ansari says, doesn't matter, I got lot. Here I have cut the crop. You take one part, I'll take the other. The muhajir automatically will say, I'll take the smaller amount. The smaller one, because it's yours. The Ansari knows this. So after he cuts it, whatever is pure, he puts it in one sack. And he presses it down, so it becomes very small. Whatever is dirty and filthy and all the leftovers, and all the grass, he puts it in another sack, he makes it bigger, bigger, bigger. He knows that when my Ansari brother, muhajir brother is going to look at it, He's going to see the smaller sack. He will understand why must I take more. So he will take the smaller sack. Thinking he has left for me majority. To that extent they would be ready to sacrifice. Here's a big sack. Here's a small. Choose which one you want. He said I'll take the small one. He said you sure? Take the big one. He said no I'll take the small one. He will go away happy I took little. This one will go away happy also that my Allah knows I gave him more. You will never find this. Get married and you try and give your brother also 500 rand. Your wife will make the scream of the skies. Why you must give him? What you must give him for? He got his own money. Just a few cents you can't give to your own family. They were giving to a tribe which they knew nothing about. Allah Taala describes it. That group which made the house ready. And then Allah Taala says, يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ They had so much love for the muhajirin. وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا In their heart they weren't upset. Why is coming and taking what I got? وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ They were ready to give preference even if it was that they had to suffer at night. وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا We will never see in the annals of history this level. 
وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ Allah Tabarukra says, if someone can be saved from what is called greed, that man has gone to the heights of paradise. But this level of being saved from greed, you will never find it in history. It was Rijal Hawl Rasul. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu an, Ali radiallahu an, son says, I saw Abu Bakr radiallahu an. He became the Khalifa of Islam. When the time of his death comes, he says to Aisha radiallahu anha, the she camel we had for milk, the bowl in which we ate our meals, the bedspread we used, look at this, that camel with which I got my milk, the bowl with which I drank my milk, that bed sheet which I put on top of my bed. He says, these three things were given to me by the Muslim Baytul Mal. I never have the money to buy it. So the Baytul Mal said, since you the Khalifa, here's one she goat. And here's one cup for milk. And here's one bedspread. If I have to be given this year when I become a teacher in Madrasa, after one year that will get finished also. The sheep will be gone, the cup will be gone. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh says to Aisha radiallahu anh, now your father is going to pass away. You must take this to the next khalif. It's not mine. You know what I'm saying? It's like that one glass in that house. But that person says, it's not mine. It was written there. It belongs to them. When he came to Umar radiallahu anh, he cried. And he said, Abu Bakr has done such a pattern, which I don't think anyone in the world can follow. Even the bowl, it was recorded, this doesn't belong to me. Even the bowl. Umar radiallahu anh, Allama Shibli and Umani wrote this. He said, you see Umar radiallahu anh going to conquer Masjid al-Aqsa. The law has already come. Aqsa is taken over. The Muslims have taken over the whole Sham. The people of Aqsa says, we will give the keys to the leader. Let the leader come. Shibli and Umani says, I am sure at that time, readers, you will think that the leader of the Muslims now will be going with his Rolls Royce, will be landing with a helicopter. He will have all reporters around him. This is a conquest. This is victory. You walk like a master. You walk with the red carpet. As you walk, everyone has to come around you. You walk with your head up. He says, but when Umar radiallahu anh made the journey to Al-Aqsa, he never made it like A revolution around the Rasul of Allah. This revolution you will never find in the histories of Islam. Me and my brother have a fight. Just that small fight. In the end, I win the fight, the argument. Now he has to say to me, sorry, as I walk in the house, I'm bouncing already. That you saw who I am. He says, when the man was the conqueror of the entire Sham, Aqsa's keys are being given over. He says, you may think that he was walking surrounded by an entourage to show the grandeur and the might of the Muslim leader. He says, no entourage was going to accompany him. Not even an ordinary tent was provided for his accommodation. It was a weak camel, a few members of the Muhajirin and the Ansar who would accompany him. Hafiz ibn Kathir narrates that he enters into the city Jabia on the outskirts of Al-Aqsa on a camel. The camel has no real saddle. It has no stirrup. If you ever rode on a camel, you will understand as that camel goes up with its hump, that day your behind will paint till the night. If there is no saddle, he says, the saddle of the man who came all the way from Medina Munawara was nothing but one woolen sheet. He used to sit upon it while riding and he would use it as his bedding when he alighted. His traveling bag was a pillow when he wanted to rest. We're going for Umrah, our five bags are ready. We even got that one pillow in the aeroplane. That in the aeroplane I want to sleep, I don't like the seat, I paid so much for it. But even for that my neck mustn't pain. The leader of the world as he walked, the door he left for the world, that this is the proof of Islam. The leader of the world as he moves on his camel. To show the world that only Muhammad could have done this. He says, you have heard of Usman ibn Affan. You want to judge a place, you look at the leader. He said, you know the word Usman ibn Affan. He says, simplicity dominated the life of Usman. He entertained guests with sumptuous meals. But he himself only ate bread with vinegar. Very often he would fast for days on end. At the old age, Usman radiallahu an, they found him going to fetch water for himself to make wudu. Not like our house where we just enter the bathroom, put it on, you get hot water. The Usman, 
at the age of 80, he's going outside to make wuzu. So someone said to him, tell your slave to get the water. You are the khalif of the Muslim world. Usman radiallahu anh says, Allah has given them the night to rest. It is not right for me to wake them up. He said, the night is theirs so that they may rest in it. How can I take that man's sleep away? Think about this. You will understand this the day you get married. The day you get married, before you wake up, you say to your wife, go make my tea. You won't wake up until the tea is ready. At that time you will think of this man who said, the rest is theirs. It's not my right to wake them up. At the age of 80, Usman is going out to get water. So these were the men around the Rasul of Allah. I will end on this last sentence. Allama ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah said this. He said the best group of the ummah were the sahaba radiallahu anhum. There was no group of this ummah which could be compared to the sahaba in matters such as uniting on guidance and abstaining from dissension and disunity. He says whatever shortcomings are attributed to them were so few and minor. It is as though there is a faint mark on a white cloth. Remember the sentence of his. Because we are living in a time today where you meet certain people who say, but see this. But the only thing they can show you is a paper. Words of history written on paper holds no value. Words of history as recorded by Sunnah, by Quran and authentic Sunnah has value. I was in the aeroplane when I was coming before the Turkish elections. I saw the New York Times. When I read the New York Times, they were writing about Erdogan. A man can write any story. According to the writer is the thought. The people who read the New York Times, as I read that article, at the end of the article, you convince that Erdogan is like Hitler. Evil in every angle. The people just hate him. They can't stand him. They want him out. This is what writing can do. You come back on that side in Turkey, you read the newspaper, you will see Erdogan is like him. Saint of the era. How do you know what's the truth and what's a lie? You can never believe paper. You have to go on the ground. On the ground an election takes place. The president of Turkey has announced so many people voted, they all like him. The next day the New York Times will write, the people of Turkey are all idiots. They don't know what to say. So much you can write, you can make the minds of people. History can show a lot of stories. They can show a man at night, he was reading 200 rakats of salah. They can show that same man was drinking liquor and sleeping with women at night. You cannot believe just written. Go on the ground. When you will enter that tent of Islam and you will see Sahaba radiallahu anhu. You will see Ali radiallahu anhu hugging Umar radiallahu anhu. In a manner that Umar radiallahu anhu when he's going to take over Al-Aqsa. He says, oh Ali you will be my governor over Medina Munawwara at the moment. In a manner that Umar radiallahu anhu wants to get married. He already has wives. He is old. The daughter of Ali radiallahu anhu from Fatima radiallahu anhu is young. Umar radiallahu anhu is shy. Ali radiallahu anhu got an excuse. Many a time you will propose one day. The girl doesn't like you. But she doesn't know how to say no to you. So normally they got one answer. They say my istikhara never work out. That istikhara means that I don't like you flat. You never come in a dream and say I'm a bad guy. <laughs> Ali radiallahu anhu wanted to. He could have said to Umar radiallahu anhu, You are so old. And she is so young. You have other wives. Can't I get married? Get her married? She's a virgin. He could have made any excuse. He could have said the istikhara wasn't good. But Ali radiallahu anhu with happiness. He says to Umar radiallahu anhu, isn't she too young for you? So Umar radiallahu anhu says, she is young. Meaning she is not really that of that age which should come in the house of a khalifa. He says, but because she is from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I would love to take someone like that into my house. On the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ali radiallahu anhu gives his daughter, Umar radiallahu anhu accepts his daughter. That tent you will see, Umar radiallahu has to give out wealth. They have to write down the register who will take. They say to him, you are the khalif first, your family. He says, no. First the family of Ali and Abbas. The family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, the family of Umar, he brings them sixth in the line. Sixth in the line means as you go down the line, you get less, 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 less. 
His own family would come down. He would say, put the family of Umar where Allah put them. They came later on into Islam, push them later on. He says, for the family of Rasulullah, Allah put them high, put them high. That tent you will see which was a miracle of Islam. Allama ibn Taymiyyah said these words. He said, if you find any mistake among the Sahaba, it is like a dot you will see on a white kurta. You see, when the kurta is white, you will pick up the dot very fast. Not because the dot is big, because the cloth is unique. Because the cloth is unique, you will say there is a dot there. You will say the dot being picked up by your eye is a miracle in itself. That what a galaxy and you are only picking up a dot. He says compared to the rest of the world, he says these shortcomings are like faint marks on a white cloth. It is the fault of the onlooker if he only notices these stains but does not notice the tidiness of the cloth itself. Others compared to this group would be like a stained cloth with only a few clean white spots. The best group of the Summa trained under the best teacher. The social life and character of the men of the era of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which we find portrayed in the Quran, Hadith and reliable reports of history, presents the most shining picture of a group of people who were pious, just and noble. This was the result and the effect of the teachings and the blessed company of the Rasul of Allah. An example of such a group of people are not to be found even in smaller numbers in any other period or anywhere else in the world history. These were such men of whom the entire humanity can be proud of. This itself was the fourth door to show the miracle of Islam. May Allah Taala let it hit your heart. You are da'is, inviters to a unique deen. This tent is unique. There are Christian friends out there. There are Jewish friends. There are atheists. There are Hindus. There are people going in no direction. And a religion came which is unique from any angle. Whichever angle you can bring your friend into the religion of Islam, let them come and see this door. It is such a unique tent that every door, there's no back door. On the one door is Quran. On the one door is the family of Rasulullah s.a.w. who shows wealth was never meant for us. On the one door is that unique galaxy of Sahaba radiallahu who made a change in their life. On one door are scholars who say you can kill us also, we will never change this religion. Allow people to enter this tent. The doors are unique on the outside and inside this tent is Jannah. Is the keys of paradise. Is the keys of happiness forever and ever. Even if you are far from your faith. Even if you don't perform salah, remember you also allowed into the tent. Just because you're not practicing, don't be so stingy. You got a girlfriend, she wants to know about Islam, you shy. Because you say, you know me, I don't read my own salah, how can I bring you in? Allow her to enter. We know those families where the boy brought the girl into Islam. She married him because she liked him. She started reading the books. As she started reading, she said to him, You liar, you never told me about Islam. She made him start performing salah. He started telling her, it's not so necessary. She said, you never told me about niqab. He said, no, you look nice without the scarf. She put on the scarf, she put him with the beard. He wanted out, she kept him in. Don't be stingy with your Islam. There are people outside the tent that don't know what's happening in the tent. The doors are unique, inside the tent it's unique. We have been given the final, the unique, supreme, sublime, and the proofs of it are on all four sides. Quran, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi and how they suffered for Islam. The ulama who never gave up even one teaching for Islam, and the men around Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi and the revolution they made. May Allah tabarakallahu ta'ala let this message hit all our hearts and make all of us ambassadors of Islam. Allow us to bring people who are outside inside. And may Allah keep us always inside this tent. Jazakum Allah for listening so well. Normally the hardest thing to listen to a bayan is when you see Brai outside. I did tell them as soon as it's ready they must make a sign. Now I can see the fire, is, the smoke is also telling me sign up. End the bayan. Jazakum Allah for your time. May Allah keep me on Islam firm. May Allah keep you on Islam firm. And may Allah make us da'is for the rest of the world. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillah.